Hello, I'm Anna Childers, a computational biologist from the USDA Agricultural Research Service and co-lead of the agency's Ag 100 Pest Initiative. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to give a talk on our work sequencing the Asian giant hornet genome. There is nothing like a giant invading insect with a powerful sting to invoke fear in the human psyche. The saga of the Asian giant hornet, Vespa mandarinia, has been irresistible for the media who bestowed it with the moniker of murder hornet. As a scientific community, we would like to discontinue the, the use of this name. However, the Asian giant hornet doesn't come by its bad reputation by mistake. It is the world's largest hornet, with specimens up to two inches long may dwarf honeybees. Their stings are more dangerous to humans than honeybee stings because the hornets can sting multiple times with a stinger that is longer than that of other bees and wasps. In fact, they are able to pierce through standard beekeeper suits, so our eradication teams have had to acquire special, thicker hornet suits. The Asian giant hornets also have a larger venom sac, allowing it to inject a larger volume of venom. While there are upwards of 20 to 50 human deaths attributed to Asian giant hornet stings each year, their threat to humans has been overblown. They have no interest in humans except in defense of their nests. Asian giant hornets live in social colonies established by a, by a single queen in the spring. The colony grows throughout the summer to house hundreds or thousands of sterile female, female workers. This is a haplodiploid species, so as the fall sets in, the queen lays unfertilized eggs that will produce males and fertilized eggs that will be reared to produce a new batch of queens. The reproductives will leave the nest, mate, and the queens will disperse to overwinter while the original colony will die with the onset of winter. A single queen can produce hundreds of new queens, although only a fraction will successfully establish a new nest in the spring. As the colony grows throughout the summer, it feeds on tree sap, plant secretions, and other large insects, including other hymenoptera like honeybees. Insects are targeted for protein, which is why the hornets make meatballs from the muscle-rich thorax of the bees and discard the rest. As the colony prepares to produce reproductives, it enters a slaughter and occupation phase, an impressive display and the real reason for their sensational nickname. During this phase, they seek out honeybee hives, and in a matter of hours, 20 to 30 hornets can kill off an entire hive of upwards of 30,000 bees by decapitating all of the adults. The honeybee colony is then defended as their own as the hornets harvest the bee brood for food over the course of days or weeks. The Asian honeybee, Apis serrana, has evolved a defensive strategy against these attacks. Scouting hornets are surrounded by worker bees forming a ball around it, vibrating their wings and killing the hornet with a combination of heat and carbon dioxide. Unfortunately, our domesticated European honeybees, Apis mellifera, have no such tricks. So what brought this terror to our shores? The answer is we don't know whether it was an accidental or intentional introduction. We may never get an answer to that question, but we can work to determine whether it has been a single introduction and, whether the, and where the source population is from. I'll speak more on that later in the talk. First, I wanna tell you more about the Asian giant hornets that have been found in North America and our work to produce a reference quality genome assembly from them. Documentation of the invasion into North America started with the finding of three individuals on Vancouver Island in Canada in the fall of 2019. The map on the left is showing all of the state of Washington as well as parts of Canada to give you some context about how large of an area the hornets are being found in. The map on the right is zoomed in to show the very northwest region of Washington state on the right and part of Vancouver Island on the left. The red dots indicate confirmed hornet activity and I have indicated the location of known nests on the detailed map. The red dot in the upper left is where the first hornets in North America were found on Vancouver Island. Based on the hornet sightings, um, in that area, a group of beekeepers were able to triangulate a nest and destroy it in September of 2019. By December, however, sightings were confirmed and honeybee hive attacks were reported in the United States near Blaine in the upper northwest of Washington state. 
which is about 30 miles over an inlet from Vancouver Island, so the threat had come to our shores. Here, I'd like to pause this story for a moment and explain why USDA is sequencing this genome. In the fall of 2018, the Ag 100 Pest Initiative was undertaken by a group of us at USDA's Agricultural Research Service with the goal of generating reference quality genome assemblies and annotations for the top 100 agricultural pest arthropod genomes as a contribution to the international I5K effort to sequence the genomes of 5,000 arthropods and in support of the Earth Biogenome Project, which aims to sequence all 1.5 million eukaryotes, all plant, animal, and fungal species. When it came to choosing the quote unquote top 100 ag arthropod pests, we consulted with several groups. We knew we needed to address diversity across agricultural stakeholder groups, including field crops, animals, bees, forests, and stored products. Additionally, while our focus is on US ag pests, we also needed to keep certain pests across the world in mind because of their high potential to become established as invasive species here. Given the threat Asian giant hornets would pose to the beekeeping industry in the United States if it were to become established, we decided to prioritize their sequencing. Pestiferous arthropods are an extensive category with great need for genomic resources. So Ag 100 Pest Scope has now expanded to 160 genomes across eight orders. If you'd like to learn more about the other species we are sequencing, you can find a list uh, you can find a list at the website address shown at the bottom of the slide. Okay, so back to our story. While we were interested in sequencing Asian giant horn, uh, the Asian giant hornet, it wasn't until May of 2020 that we learned our collaborator in British Columbia had a few specimens from the Vancouver nest, the only one found in North America at that time. And thankfully he was able to provide us with one. Since it was beekeepers, not scientists, who destroyed that first North American nest, sample collection wasn't ideal. The nest was first stunned with uh, a CO2 from a fire retardant, and then hornets were dumped in ethanol to kill them. Once dead, some samples were stored in a minus 20 freezer for a couple of weeks before being transferred to our university collaborator, who thankfully maintained them at minus 80. It's amazing when citizens think to preserve important samples like this, and we are incredibly thankful they did. But we were concerned whether the DNA would be degraded. This is the actual hornet we received. As you can see, it had its, it's, had its leg broken off, which is now above its head in this picture, and it generally got a bit beaten up in the shipment to Hawaii, where Scott Guy leads our extraction and library prep team. Because it was 2020, our first DNA extraction was destroyed when the lab's AC failed and the heat wreaked havoc with equipment. Thankfully, input requirements have come down and our extraction team was able to use a small remaining piece of the thorax to generate a successful PecBio Hi-Fi library. The remainder of this specimen will be deposited into the National Insect Collection at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History as a voucher for potential future research. While the library appeared to sequence all right, the yield was lower and an initial assembly was more fragmented than we were hoping, so we generated two cells of data despite expecting a genome size under 400 megabase pairs. The two cells combined yielded over 34 gigs of HiFi data. Before even assembling the data, it became clear that the Asian giant hornet wasn't going to simply play nice with genome assembly either. This, in this plot, um, where the first 100 hi-fi reads were self-aligned, you can see evidence of a high fraction of repetitive sequence present in large blocks. For comparison, here are similar plots of the reads from a related wasp from the same genus, as well as another wasp from another genus, from a different genus. In both of these species, there is much less off-diagonal alignment suggesting less repetitive content in those genomes. In fact, if you just look at the reads underlying the large blocks of the Asian giant hornet alignment, you can see just how stripy they are uh, from the long stretches of repeats. Indeed, the Asian giant hornet appears to have its terrible stripiness encoded down to its DNA. 
This preliminary look at the data isn't meant to be conclusive, but it is helpful for getting a sense of the complexity of the sequence and how easily it might assemble. We partnered with PacBio on this project and ran multiple assembly methods. We decided IPA followed by purge dupes produced the best assembly, which is shown here. The final primary assembly had 262 contigs with an N50 of 3.14 megabase pairs. The assembly is 99.3% 90, complete according to a Busco analysis. Looking at the alignment of those conserved Busco genes on the assembly, only 20 frame shift induced errors were detected, indicating a QV over 48. We follow the assembly standards established by the Earth Biogenome Project, and by all metrics, the Contig assembly was a success. The time from receiving the sample to deciding on our final assembly was only six weeks, not months, opening the possibility that reference quality assemblies can be generated as part of the real-time response to invasive species, certainly a paradigm shift in their management. We also assembled the mitochondrial genome. To do this, Jonas Korlock from PacBio used alignments to the existing reference genome to pull out the mitochondrial reads from the data set, then ran IPA and manually performed end overlap trimming and start point rotation of the contigs. I say contigs plural because it turns out the Asian giant hornet appears to have at least five variants due to the presence of an extended variable number tandem repeat or VNTR region that corresponds to the control region, which was missing in, in the available NCBI reference. The genomes have between five to nine copies of an 823 base pair repeat unit. Remapping of the mitochondrial reset, read set generated estimates of the relative abundance of the mitochondrial genome VNTR variants in the specimen based on what we uh, based on what we uh, based on that we chose the most abundant variant as the reference remapping also revealed additional heterogeneity in the VNTR including SNPs and structural variants our attempts to generate a high C library for scaffolding were also fraught initially the library prep appeared to have failed to produce proximity ligations and we chalked it up to likely sample degradation we vowed to do the best contig assembly we could with the sample and release the data, hoping to get another sample to produce a scaffolded assembly. In early August of 2020, we publicly released this contig assembly ahead of publication in order to support scientific and invasive species control teams as quickly as possible. Data were deposited in NCBI, and additional methodology can be found in USDA's Ag Data Commons. With the release complete and our extraction, our extraction team uh, took a step back and went and looked at the actual data from a mini sequencing reaction that they run to test libraries before sending them off for sequencing, and shockingly did find it had produced some data. Here you can see the raw contigs of the unscaffolded assembly. The red boxes off, off the diagonal show the contacts between contigs. So despite the suboptimal sam sample collection, we were still able to get high C contigs, allowing grouping and ordering of contigs and chromosomes. That said, these chromosomes lack a lot of the repetitive components because the contigs that contain them lack sufficient unique sequence to provide informative contacts. In this plot, the white banding is the repetitive regions that lack the informative contacts because they are not unique to a single locus in the genome. Here you can see the draft scaffolding of a related WASP. This preliminary plot has not yet been manually reviewed and corrected to resolve the misjoins that you can see. But as you can see in this other WASP species that we are working on, the long repeat regions were able to be assembled into larger contigs. So while the repeat regions themselves do not supply contigs, those repetitive regions are components of larger contigs that do have contigs, that do have contacts with other contigs in order to scaffold them, resulting in a more complete scaffolding of the genome across the entire chromosome for that species. 
from May to August of 2020, at the same time we were sequencing and releasing the first genome assembly of Asian giant hornet, numerous Asian giant hornet specimens were confirmed in North America with a distribution that suggested multiple nests were likely active. It wasn't until the end of September that the first live specimen was successfully trapped and the Washington State Department of Agriculture's team would finally get a chance to find and eradicate a nest. Unfortunately, attempts to attach a Bluetooth device in order to track the hornet failed. Thankfully, they got a second chance at the end of October when four more live specimens were caught. If you look closely, you can see the tracker and its antenna uh, that the team successfully attached to the wasp that is shown here. After feeding it a bit of jelly, they tracked it back to a nest in a tree approximately eight feet off the ground. This was quite a surprise because the team was looking for a ground nest. It was our understanding that Asian giant hornets nested in the ground, except for one subspecies that nests in trees. The first nest found on Vancouver Island was in the ground. So the question becomes, have we had multiple introductions of this species to the Pacific Northwest from different subspecies? Or is there just a factor of opportunity? Where at some lower frequency, any subspecies of the hornet might nest in tree or ground cavities? We don't know yet, but the data we are generating should help us answer that question soon. The Washington State Department of Agriculture's team eradicated the nest vacuuming just under 100 workers from the nest before cutting it from the tree. The photo in the lower left is of the opened up nest. Upon examining its content, contents a few days after vacuuming it out in the field, upwards of 200 queens were found emerging. The nest was eradicated just in time before those reproductives could disperse. Given that additional hornets were found in other locations across the state and Canada through November of 2020, we assume that reproductives were able to distribute from other existing nests. Efforts to eradicate the hornets will be continuing this year. Working with our colleagues at the Washington State Department of Agriculture and with USDA's APHIS, we were able to obtain a sample of a male Asian giant hornet from the eradicated nest in Blaine, Washington. You can see him here just before DNA extraction, but unfortunately he isn't in all his glory as he kind of came apart when opening, when coming out of the tube. We were excited to get a male specimen because this species is haplodiploid well, the, where the males are haploid and females are diploid. We are hoping by only having one copy of the genome that this will help us generate an improved assembly over the female assembly that we already released. We again extracted from a piece of the thorax and weren't completely satisfied with the output from a single hi-fi run. The lower output in this case appears to be due to an issue with the sizing of the library with a, some new equipment that we were using, which resulted in the generation of lots of subreads that were too long to pass CCS. We went ahead and ran a second cell, but I don't have those run stats yet. We also are still awaiting the high C data, so unfortunately I can't show you a final assembly. What I can say is that a quick Hi-Fi ASM assembly of the first cell of data yielded an assembly that tracked very well with an initial contig assembly, uh, with an initial assembly using a single cell of the Canadian sample. With an estimated 20X coverage, we have a contig N50 over 1.4 megabase pairs and around 1,200 contigs. Given that this sample seems, to, seems likely to produce a genome assembly with similar contiguity of the first, we may be able to rule out specimen collection method and quality as an issue. More likely, it seems, the difference in repetitive content between wasp species that I showed earlier based on the self alignment of hi-fi reads is what is causing a difference in contiguity across species. Here you can see the assembly stats for our Canadian Asian giant hornet, the initial assembly of the US sample, and two related wasp species. Using less data, the other wasps had higher contiguity than our Canadian Asian giant hornet assembly. As we sequence a large 
spectrum of arthropods in this project, it is really interesting to see how repetitive content is affecting the assembly, the assembly contiguity, both in terms of the amount and types of repeats. In collaboration with Brock Harper at Purdue University and Todd Gilligan with, with USDA's APHIS, we are planning to use our genome assemblies as a reference for an Asian giant hornet population genomics project. As you would rightly assume, the Asian giant hornet is native to Asia. It has several subspecies described based on color forms, and distinct populations are thought to occur in several geographic regions, including different parts of China, Taiwan, Japan, and Korea, and the Russian Far East. On the map on the left, the dots indicate known locations of Asian giant hornet populations across this large region. We are currently working to obtain samples from the various regions I have listed here. We intend to sequence a genome from each of the, of the expected five subspecies, as well as perform population level gen, uh, sequencing across the native range. These data should allow us to understand diversity within the native Asian giant hornet population and better determine if there are indeed any genetically unique populations. We are hopeful these data will allow us to determine the origin of the Asian giant hornet population or populations in North America and how many introductions are involved. Knowing the origin of the Asian giant hornet population in North America is important because the biology and potential range varies between subspecies across its native range. These differences will help us better target control efforts and predict potential establishment and spread. Additionally, the assembly will allow us to develop molecular markers to identify new specimens to the level um, of subspecies or original geographic origin and allow for rapid screening of new specimens. Given the similarity and uncertain taxonomy of some hornets within the native range, molecular diagnostics might be necessary to reliably separate Asian giant hornets from some other species of Vespa. Finally, molecular diagnostic techniques such as digital PCR will allow for screening of environmental DNA for the presence of hornets, such as in killed beehives that we would like to diagnose as victims of a hornet attack versus some other cause. Using additional specimens from the Blaine Nest, ARIS researchers have begun a wide array of additional research. This includes pheromone characterization work to replicate the pheromone that Asian giant hornets use to tag honeybee hives in order to use it as a lure to improve our traps so that we can better monitor for hornets throughout the season. RNA sequencing, including our ISOSeq, will aid our gene discovery efforts, specifically helping identify difficult to predict genes like smell, taste, and pheromone receptors. Cultivation of bacteria and fungi from Asian giant hornet bodies will, aid, will add to existing culture collections managed by ARS and be uh, investigated as potential biocontrol agents. Sequencing of microbes, including viruses, bacteria, and fungi within Asian giant hornets will allow us to determine if any are novel introductions to the U.S., which could be problematic and will help us learn more about them, including whether they could also be used as biocontrol agents. Finally, venom protein composition will allow us to better understand how Asian giant hornet venom compares to the venom of other species already present in the U.S., which will be useful to the medical community. We are hopeful that the data and research we seek to complete in 2021 will help our peers at APHIS and the Washington State Department of Agriculture counter the invasive Asian giant hornet threat, as well as generally increase our knowledge of this fascinating species. I wanna thank everyone who has been involved in this work from ARS, PacBio, APHIS, the Washington State Department of Agriculture, and our university collaborators. This is a fantastic, dedicated team I am honored to work with. Thank you for listening.